in your house, the when you plug in your toaster into the wall, the current running through those wires is an alternating current. So we're going to focus on what that alternating current really means and talk about RMS voltage as well as the relationship between average power and the RMS voltage. RMS, what does it mean? Root mean square. We'll talk about it. So first a demonstration. This is a light emitting diode or LED that lights up only when the current is going through it positively. When it's plugged into a wall outlet, the current goes positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. So it only lights up when it's positive. And so what we're going to see, if we spin this around, uh, I'll spin this, this wire around, and you'll be able to see that there are flashes of light. Those, li those flashes occur when the uh, AC, alternating current, is positive and, it, it, and then it goes dim when the AC is negative, when the voltage is negative. So you should be able to see flashes of light as this goes around in a circle. And this is proof that we're actually using alternating current uh, power in here. The frequency of the alternating current is 60 cycles per second. So you should be seeing about 60 flashes per second coming from this um, LED. That's alternating current. Okay, as we've seen in the video, the in an alternating, in an AC circuit, alternating current circuit, the charge flow reverses direction periodically. In response to a time varying voltage. So what's driving this is some generator. So this could be a power station, this could be some source of power. In our case, in, in our homes, it is a, it is a power station. It's generating electricity with a frequency of 60 hertz, 60 cycles per second. And, uh, and then that's powering this, this filament. So you have to think about the current coming this way through this front wire and then that way and alternating back and forth 60 times per second. The, uh, and so if you look at the voltage as a function of time, the voltage across this, uh, the, the outlet plugs, the voltage will be oscillating back and forth between some maximum and some minimum, which we call V naught or V zero, uh, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. Voltage is sometimes negative and alternating back and forth. That's all there is to it. Um, you have to be careful with AC power because that 60 hertz and its overtones can lead to humming uh, noises uh, if, if your circuits aren't connected up properly. You can hear some audible noises since 60 hertz is actually barely audible by the human ear. Um, so let's write the time dependent voltage. This looks like a sine curve, and you know what? It is. That's what it looks like. The voltage as a function of time is this peak voltage, V naught, measured in volts, times the sine of 2 pi f, where f is the frequency, times the time. So this is the voltage. Here we're plotting voltage as a function of the time. And it looks like a sinusoidal wave. Let's double check to make sure that the, the argument of the sine is correct. 
If we look at a time, the time required to complete one cycle, and you say, I know what the time required to complete one cycle is, it's called the period. You're right. So when we've completed one cycle, the period T, at that point, the voltage is V naught. So we're going to, instead of T, we're going to put capital T for the period is V naught sine of 2 pi F. And now we're putting capital T here. But you say, hang on, isn't there a relationship between the frequency and the period? And I say, yes, there is. Now, the frequency is 1 over the period. You substitute that in here, the frequency is 1 over the period, 1 over the period, times the period, the periods cancel out. Now we get the sine uh, of 2 pi. Well, that's the same as the sine of 360 degrees. It's 0. And in fact, when you get v naught sine 2 pi, this, uh, this says you've gone through one complete cycle of the sine function in one period. So that's exactly what we expect. We've, we have gone through one complete cycle of the sine function in one period t. So the stuff inside here, the argument, the sine must be correct. That's what justifies it. Time t is measured in seconds. Frequency uh, of the generator is measured in hertz. So the voltage as a function of time is v naught sine 2 pi f t. Uh, why is there a v naught out here? That just measures the peak voltage and the, the minimum voltage here. The sine function oscillates between 1 and minus 1. So whatever you multiply it by, v naught in this case, um, changes the amplitude how much it goes back and forth. Okay, 20-8, define the RMS voltage. RMS, I um, told you before, means root mean square with the first three letters of those three words for informing the RMS. And the root means square root. So the RMS voltage, how is it defined? It's defined as the root this line this horizontal line above the v of t squared is the mean means the mean what does mean 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 means average and then this is the square. So the root mean square voltage, it, here's the voltage. The voltage is a function of time. It's squared. It's, we're taking the mean or the average, and then we're taking the square root of that. Well, we should get for the RMS voltage and something that's measured in volts because we're taking the square root of a voltage of an average voltage that's squared. And, and so we'll get units of volts. And, and what do we actually get? And here's how to do the calculation. It's actually easiest done uh, graphically rather than mathematically. This is a plot. Uh, the, the black is V of T. It's the same plot that we showed in the previous slide. The voltage, V of t, oscillates between 0 plus V naught down to minus V naught, where V naught is the peak voltage, as we've denoted right here. All right, well, what's VRMS? Well, what we do to find VRMS is we say, all right, I have to square v of t first. This is right into the deep interior 
I have to square that function, b of t first. Well, what does that look like? Here's v squared of t. If we square 0, we get 0. So that point becomes this point. If we square v naught, we get v naught squared. That becomes this point. If we square 0, we get 0 again. That's that point. If we square minus v naught, minus v naught quantity squared, the minuses can kill each other and become a positive 1, and v naught squared is just v v naught squared. So we get positive again. This The square is always going to be positive. You already knew that. You knew that if you square any number, positive or negative, you get a positive number. And in between, you get this nice, it looks like a sinusoidal curve, uh, nice and smooth on the top, smooth on the bottom, and, and it looks like the mean of that should be right about halfway between the top and the bottom, and in fact it is. So, this is the mean squared voltage. It's V naught squared over 2. Because it's halfway between 0 and V naught squared. Well, happy day. We got V naught squared over 2 is the mean squared voltage. So that's this beast here. I've now taken the mean of the square voltage and placed that in here. And now all I have to do is take the square root of that. RMS, the last uh, letter. The square root of V naught squared, well, that's our old friend V naught. And the square root of 1 over 2 is 1 over the square root of 2. So that's the bottom line here. The root mean square voltage is 1 over the square root of 2 times the peak voltage. Well, how? what is 1 over the square root of 2? What is the square root of 2? The square root of 2 is about 1.4, and 1 over the square root of 2 is about 0 0.7. And so we can expect the RMS voltage, the root mean square voltage, to be maybe 2 thirds or so of the peak voltage, and sure enough it is. So that's the root mean square voltage. Um, for household currents in the US, the peak voltage is 170 volts. And the RMS voltage is 120 volts. So when people talk about uh, your household circuits being a 120 volt circuit, are they talking about RMS voltage or peak voltage? And you say, it's RMS, because it's 120 volts is what you get there. All right. In the in a subsequent chapter, we're going to deal more with this, but this is a great uh, introduction to that part. In circuits that contain only resistance, so we're not talking about any transistors or capacitors or anything funky, the current reverses direction each time the polarity of the generator reverses. So, and the current and voltage are in phase with each other. So when the current's high, the voltage high is high. When the current's low, the voltage is low. They're, they're oscillating, oscillating along in phase, like, like you and your um, partner, when you're swinging on swings next to each other, you're oscillating in phase. And uh, so in that case, then the current, as a function of time, we can get from v, i equals v over r, v equals i r, divide by r, i equals v over r, and we plug in the relationship for V of T that we wrote down in the previous slide is V naught times sine 2 pi F T divided by R. And then this V naught over R is just I naught sine 2 pi F times T. So if we were to plot the current as a function of time, so this is the voltage as a function of time here. If we were to plot the current of, as a function of time, it would oscillate back and forth between positive I naught and negative I naught, and it would look just the same. It's 
So I'm just doing lines here to show which parts match up. So it looked basically the same. Still a sine wave, uh, has a different amplitude uh, or peak of I naught. All right, so derive the relationship between the average power and the RMS voltage and current. This one will become important when we talk about um, RLC circuits. And there's a lab about that too, as I remember. So V we know. V naught sine 2 pi ft, I we know, is the same kind of form. Once you've got this one, then you know how to write down this one. You just replace the v's with i's. And now we want to know what the average power is in this circuit. Well, let's just multi multiply it out. P is i times v. We know that. Um, multiply this i by this v, and you get an i naught v naught, that's here. Then you get a sine times a sine, but both of those signs have the same argument. So you got a sine squared now. And now if we want to find the average power, then what do we actually get? The average of of this whole beast here, and, and the easiest way to actually look at it is to plot it out here. Here's P as a function of time. That's this time-dependent power. It's I naught V naught times sine squared of 2 pi f times t. Well, its amplitude, clearly its peak value is I naught times V naught, and its minimum value is going to be zero. This looks like the, the function when we, we um, squared the voltage before. Same kind of deal. We get a sine squared, but it's, it's not oscillating positive and negative. It's, above, it's going from zero to positive, zero to positive, zero to positive. What's its average value? You say, well, I could figure that out. The average is halfway between the highest point and the lowest point. That's not hard. And the highest point is I naught V naught. The lowest point is zero. And what's halfway between them? One half I naught V naught. No big deal. It's really pretty straightforward. And, and so therefore, the average power is this I naught V naught over two. Well, but we're asked to relate the average power to the RMS voltage and the RMS current. Here's a little trick. 2 is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. That's kind of how we define the square root. And the square root is whatever you have to multiply by itself to get the number back. So this 2 can be rewritten as the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. And if we put one of the square roots of 2 under the i naught and one of them under the v naught, then you say, well, hang on just a minute. That's v naught divided by the square root of 2. That's the root mean square voltage. And i naught divided by the square root of 2, that's the root mean square current. So this is the relationship. P average is I R M S times V R M S. That's the relationship between the R M S current and, and voltage and the average power. And this equation and this concept really tell you why the R M S um, current and voltage are important. Because this equation looks just the same except for the bar and the RMS, it just looks like P equals IV. And the RMS values allow you to use the same, same form of the equation, but now instead of re representing, in this case, a time-dependent quantity, you're talking about average quantities right here. Uh, here are some relationships you know that V equals IR, uh, therefore V naught 
is I naught, the maximum values, the peak values, if you divide those by square root of 2, then V naught over the square root of 2 is VRMS, right? I naught divided by the square root of 2 is IRMS. And that's this equation right here. This one we've already derived for you. You can also go through and derive these, these other equations in exactly the same way that we did before. Remember the P equals I squared R equation that we had, and the P is V squared over R. These guys come directly from these two equations. V equals IR, and P equals um, IV. All right, these principles are important to, to operation of your loudspeakers. Loudspeakers tend to be either uh, 8 ohm, so-called impedance, but it really is going to act like a resistance in this example, or 4 ohm impedance speakers. Stereo receiver applies a peak voltage of 34 volts to a speaker. So this is a circuit. Now, instead of having the battery symbol, which has a, a long line and a short line and a plus and a minus symbol, we don't have that anymore. We're not in Kansas anymore. We've got an alternating current source here. And we denote that by this circle with a little squiggly line in it. The peak voltage is 34 volts. The resistance is 8 ohms, and we'll talk about impedance in the next chapter. Um, we're supposed to find the RMS voltage, the RMS current, and the average power for this circuit. Well, the RMS voltage, we know that that's V naught divided by the square root of 2, so that's no big deal. We're given V naught, the peak voltage of 34, and that says that the RMS voltage is 24 volts. Which one's bigger, the peak or the RMS? Well, the RMS is kind of an average, so it's always going to be less than the peak. And sure enough, it is in this case. 24 is less than 34. All right, what about the RMS current? Well, if you recall, uh, V equals IR. But then we can always just put the RMS like we showed before. The resistance is always a constant, so it's never you never have to worry about RMS for the current or for the resistance. And so we solve this equation for I RMS by dividing both sides of this equation by R. So I RMS is V RMS divided by R. So that's this equation here. The RMS we just worked out, it's 24 volts, R is 8 ohms, that gives three, uh, an RMS current of 3 amps. And then finally, the average power. Well, that was the, the concept that we just worked out. That's RM, IRMS times VRMS, and we have both of those now, we have values for both. You plug them both in and you get 72 watts. Now that is not the amount of power that's actually converted into sound. A lot of that, most of that power is wasted, and, and very little of it gets actually converted into sound waves that prop propagate through the air. But that is the power of the circuit required to drive that, that speaker. Uh, extension cords. Again, uh, space heater issue to keep uh, warm. Sometimes, however, the heaters must be located far from 120 volt wall receptacle. 120 volt is what? Peak or RMS? You're right. It is RMS. So an extension cord must be used. However, manufacturers often warn against using an extension cord. If one must be used, they recommend a certain wire gauge or smaller. Why the warning and why are smaller gauge wires better than larger gauge wires? Um, and you have this cute little graphic of the wire starting to burn up. Um, well, the longer the wire, the more resistance, and 
because the resistance is rho L over A. If L gets longer and longer, the more resistance you have to that current and the more potential for heating. Why do you want to use a smaller gauge wire than a larger gauge? And you say, well, aren't smaller gauge wires bigger around? And I say, exactly, you're right. So R is rho L over A. A smaller gauge wire has a larger cross-sectional area. And if that, it's thicker. And if that cross-sectional area is bigger, then the resistance of that wire gets smaller. And as you increase the length of the wire, then that does increase the, the resistance. So you don't want to use too long extension cords.